In the circle of life, Mother Nature has it all figured out. It's when people disrupt the natural balance that things can quickly go haywire. An example, the air potato vine, a plant originally brought from Asia for ornamental purposes, has now become a serious threat to natural areas in South Florida. That includes more than half of Miami-Dade County's 26,000 acres of natural areas. Managed by the Parks, Recreation and Open Spaces Department's Natural Areas Management Division, or NAM. The air potato is one of the most uh, troublesome plant invas invasive plants we have here. It's, it's a vine that tends to climb up the canopy and engulfs entire areas, ecosystems, farmland. The air potato vine gets its name from brown growths called bulbils that drop to the ground and produce new vines. With a growth rate of 8 inches a day, the exotic vines were choking out native plants faster than NAM staff and volunteers could pull them out. When you have invasive plants, that if, you don't, if you're not on top of them, they will just go out of control and you're back to square one. It was war, and NAM needed a new battle plan. At the same time, a U.S. Department of Agriculture researcher needed a place to experiment with a biological method of fighting the invasive vine. The Kendall Indian Hammocks Park Preserve was the perfect spot, and the small but powerful Lilioceris or lily beetle was the perfect weapon. And then we found out that they eat and reproduce only on this year potato vine. Initial tests in 2011 that released a small number of beetles were encouraging, but expanding the test required a lot more of the insects. NAM reached out for more allies to join the fight. First, Terra Environmental Research Institute, a magnet high school next door to Kendall Indian Hammocks Park. We promote conservation and environmentalism, of course. Uh, this project pertains to the protection of our natural areas, which is a big factor in that type of science. In May 2014, the first and only student-run beetle rearing lab in the country was unveiled at Terra. Students, with guidance from NAM and the USDA, managed the entire multi-stage process of raising the beetles and releasing them into the preserve. In the lab, we basically rear the beetles. It's a, it's a very long process and learn about entomology, learn about life processes, which is very important and why each one of these processes is so important for the survival not only of these beetles but can be applied to other organisms too. Funding for the lab was made possible by a $31,240 grant from the State Farm Youth Advisory Board, an organization made up of students that funds service learning projects that have significant impact on local communities. One thing is learning it in a book, but now they actually get to see it. And then also the effects it's going to have on the environment. So that's really what service learning is. The, the whole idea is that we'll open the eyes to these students to possibilities, maybe careers that they never even thought about. In September, the first batch of beetles raised in the Terra Lab were ready to join the bug versus wild battle. It feels good inside to help the environment and knowing that I was the one that release the beetles. It's a biological control, so you're not contaminating the soil or it's not leaching into the groundwater or local bodies of water. And it's a good idea because like, the beetles and the plants balance each other out. Restoring a natural balance is the ultimate goal. We'll never be able to eliminate it, but we'll tame this, tame this to a point that this becomes part of the diversity system. The results at this particular research site have been dramatic. A 97% reduction in the number of bull bills produced between 2011 and 2013. But the results are very site-specific and highly variable. More testing is needed, and Terra students are busy raising an army of beetles to do their part. Nothing better than including kids in the process because you know you're leaving a legacy. You know, they will carry on to the future.